Next, we're on official guide 17, DS section, problem number 252. So, in our original condition, we have one variable, which is t. And therefore, we need one equation to solve the problem. We have one variable, therefore we need one equation. Now we know that each condition, 1 and 2, gives us one equation each. So statistically, choice D is the most likely answer. Let's look at condition 1. We have S plus T equals 6 plus S. And we can cross out the S, so we're left with T equals 6. And this is a unique answer, and therefore this condition is sufficient. Condition 2, t to the power of 3 is equal to 216, which is equal to 6 to the power of 3, and therefore t must equal 6. And this is unique, and therefore sufficient as well. So the answer is choice D. Now let's take a look at the official guide, the 2016 DS number 23. According to the variable approach method, we can modify the original condition in the question. And from the question, we can get the charge of parts, which is 50. So, even though the question does not specify, we can also get the charge of labor. And we can write this as B. So there's only one variable, which is B, and we need one equation in order to match the number of variables to the number of equations. And the condition 1 has one equation, and the condition 2 has another equation. So, logically, there's a high chance that D is the correct answer choice. So looking at the condition 1, it states B times 6% is 9.6 dollars. So B equals 160 and the answer is unique and the condition is sufficient. And the condition 2 states what? 50 plus B times 6 percent equals 12.6. So B equals 160 and the answer is unique and the condition is sufficient. Since the condition 1 and 2 are the same, the correct answer choice is D. We're looking at OG17 DS number 254. Now this is a typical 2x2 two two problem. So for 2x2 two two problems, we normally draw a 2x2 two two table. I'm going to draw two lines and two more lines. And this first column will be fiction, and the other one will be non-fiction. And I'll put hardcover in the first row and paperback in the second row. And each area here will be A, B, C, and D. Now it says 25 of the books were hardcover fictions. So we get A equals 25. And we have three variables, B, C, and D. Now to solve this problem, we will need how many equations? Three equations. We need to match the number of variables with the number of equations. Now we know that each option gives us one equation each, one and two. We'll still one short of three, so chances are E is our answer choice. Now let's look at one and two together and find out. 
So it says fiction books are 40. So A plus C is equal to 40, which means 25 plus C equals 40, and C equals 15. And also, it says there are 60 hardcovers, so A plus B this time becomes 60, and A is 25, so 25 plus B equals 60, and we get B equals 35. But we still don't know the value of D. So this is not unique. But these options together are not sufficient. And indeed, our answer choice is choice E. Next, we're on the official guide 17 version. DS section, problem number 255. So the question is, is W plus H to the power of 4 greater than 0? Now, H to the power of 4 should always be greater than or equal to 0. So this holds always for all values of H. All right, so with that established, we're only left with is w greater than zero. Now, if we look at condition number two, it explicitly says w is larger than zero. So for the original question, the answer is yes, and therefore this condition is sufficient. So choice B becomes our answer. Let's take a look at question number 23 of the DS section in the 2015 official guide for GMAT. In this question, we're asked what the ratio of boys to girls is. So, we have two variables, number of boys and number of girls. Typically, we'll need two equations to solve for two variables. And in condition one, we are given one equation. In condition two, we are given another equation. So this raises the chance of C being our final answer. Let's confirm that, looking at conditions 1 and 2 together. First, what's the original question asking? It's asking about the ratio of B to G. We can express ratios the same as that, B to G. Also a fraction of B over G. That's what we really want to know, a fraction, B over G. In condition 1, we're told that g is equal to 3b. And in condition 2, actually, it's the same. We're told that b is equal to 1 quarter of the entire class, so that's g plus b. And when we multiply 4 on both sides, we get 4b equals to g plus b, so that's the same as g equals 3b. Two conditions give the same information. So condition 1 and 2 are the same, and they give the answer b over g is equal to 1 third. In this case, both are sufficient, and d becomes our answer. Usually, when two conditions give the same information, d will be our answer. This sort of problem-solving approach is called the variable approach method, and nowadays it's, no, it's the most proven and effective way of getting a correct answer in the DS section of the GMAT math section. Let's take a look at question number 24 of the DS section in the 2015 official guide for GMAT. In this question, we want to know in a sequence of 300 elements what the 293rd element is. So we have a lot of variables here, and we'll need, naturally, a lot of equations to solve this problem. So in question, condition number one, we're given one equation. Condition number two, we're given one equation. So typically we'll think, okay, there's not enough information, and E will be the right answer. But let's take a look at condition number one in more detail. In condition number one, we're told what the 298th term is, which is negative 616, and that each preceding term 
is two more than the current term. So we know that the 297th is negative 614 and then negative 612. The 295th is at negative 610. 294th is negative 608. And finally, the 293rd element is negative 606. So we see here that because we see a certain pattern in this arithmetic sequence, we can solve for our problem using the first condition and the natural answer becomes A. This sort of problem solving is called the variable approach method and it's the most proven and effective method of getting a correct answer in GMAT math DS section these days.